Belgian building workers pay bomb-damaged Dover novel and practical tribute. 200 of them volunteered to come over here and work, helping Dover to repair havoc suffered in the days when the town earned its name of Hellfire Corner. All skilled operatives, they're here to build houses and another bond of friendship. The funeral service for Baron de Cartier de Marchienne, for 19 years Belgian ambassador to Britain, took place with full military honours by special command of the King. Held at Westminster Cathedral, the service was a tribute to a man who devoted his life to the service of his country and to our own. Among those present were the late ambassador's brother and son, Monsieur Spark, representing the Belgian government. A diplomat of the old school, Baron de Cartier chose to be buried in the Britain he came to love. The gleaming nose of Avro Tudor I carries Britain's colours in the race for world air transport coverage. Our first pressurised airliner, she rates a personal tryout by the Minister of Supply, John Wilmot. Tudor I is designed for all the air above the weather flying and Britain aims to make her as familiar in transatlantic travel as America's much-boosted Skymasters and Constellations. Pressurised to allow flying at 25,000 feet, she leads the world. Filming the North Holt to Manchester triad flight, Pathé newsmen report the 300 mile an hour trip as the last word in luxury travel. At 20,000 feet up, Mr Wilmot and his parliamentary secretary could phone their London headquarters. Royal visitors came to Wembley when Queen Mary and Princess Elizabeth toured the General Electric Company's research laboratories. Interest centred in the valve manufacturing and testing plant. Later, the Royal Party saw how research experts have changed over from radar and other war-winning devices to the electric cookers and household needs of the Back to Plenty Drive. Among the many research puzzles posed by the war, was how to provide the cut diamonds used in industry, which formerly came from abroad. Here, Queen Mary saw how we now do our own diamond cutting. Another proof of the export slogan, Britain can make it. The Cossacks ride again to give French spectators a show turned on with the ceremonial of the steps. The stirrup salute leads off into a display of the sort of riding a man can do when he's just about born to the saddle. Not so long ago, the target would have been somebody's head. Now it's just a tree, but the old skill is there. And if you've any spare Belisha beacons lying around, here's a new use for them. Winner Lesnovich was camera shy, but Freddie Mills gives his views on the morning after the fight before. Well, they tell me it was a very good fight, and well, I enjoyed every minute of it myself, and apart from the second and the tenth round, of course, when they told me the going was, was pretty tough. Anyway, Lesnovich must have a dickens of a right hand because this morning I woke up with quite a headache. However, I hope Lesnovich will give me a return contest pretty soon, and I'd like to box him again. And tell me, what are your future plans, Freddie? Well, as far as I know, I rest a few days now, and then I go down to Brighton for a fortnight in preparation for my fight with Bruce Woodcock. Thank <laughs> you.